<coughs> excuse me. <coughs> what a way to start a video. Hi, everybody. It's Drew here at Drew's Diversity Idiocracy. How you all doing tonight? Well, I need to show you something. I got a haircut. It's a little... Oop. No, don't show this again. If you enjoy using this app, please take a moment to rate it. No thanks. But look at my hair. Isn't it cute? I thought so too. Thank you. You're all so sweet. Sorry, I'm just saying that in advance because I know you guys are going to all say sweet things. Um, so I wanted to make an announcement. Um, all of my giveaway winners have, um, the items have been shipped. Uh, the ones going to Canada for Claire and Nancy, it's probably going to take about two or three weeks. I think everybody within the States, I think it said six days. So, hopefully, those get to you soon enough. And all goes well with it making it to you safely. So, um, and Noni May, I sent something to you, so I can't wait for you to see it. It's some happy mail. And I want to see you open it on camera. Because I want to see your face. You're going to be so surprised. Your eyelashes are going to curl all by themselves. Sorry, I'm eating ice cream. I just got out of a meeting. And um, I was craving something sweet. So between this ice cream and these Sour Patch Kids, my sweet tooth is being managed um so i thought tonight i would answer some questions that i've been asked and i'll see if i can find some more questions that are kind of goofy zany sorry a friend of mine just messaged me <sighs> Google Chrome, you suck. All right, there, everything's open. Um, what was I going on here to do? Oh, yeah. Look up questions. Let's see. Um, hmm. Okay, yep, these are good. These are good. All right, so I'm going to answer some questions. Claire sent me some. Let's, oh, my friend's going to keep on texting me. Sorry, this has to be really enjoyable to just watch me go. Um, oh, and my oh, my vape is in here. So here we go. London fog. Oh, some more came out of my mouth that time. That's fun. So the first questions 
are from Claire Williams. Let me find find them. All right. First question. What's good in your life right now? Um, I would have to say all of you and my crochet community and being sober and having my sober support network. Next. Oh my God. Drama. All right. Next question. Would you rather have arms for legs or legs for arms? I would have to say arms for legs um, because then you're like a monkey and you can like pick stuff up with your feet. And, um, oops, I closed my phone. You can pick stuff up with your feet, a.k.a. your hands. And the next, let's see. When and why did you start crocheting? Um, I started crocheting when I was seven. My mom taught me because I saw her doing it and I thought it looked fun and I wanted to learn how to do it. Oh, my ice cream is melting. Um, now, when she first taught me, I couldn't do a second row to save my life. So I would just take one skein of yarn and do all single crochets until that whole skein of yarn was done. And it used to annoy the shit out of my mom. Like, she'd have to like undo it all, put it into a ball. And then I'd do it all over again. Well, back in like 2010-ish or so, maybe 2000... Um, about 2010, I, um, was having a really bad day at work, and I, um, came home, I was seething, I couldn't, like, I was pacing the house, and I thought, I bet crocheting something right now would be really nice. So I went to Michael's, bought some yarn, and crocheted a scarf that day. It was nice. Um, I um, I then fell in love with it. Like I didn't have any any trouble making a second row. The scarf didn't look the greatest, but I was quite pleased with myself. So ever since then, I've been an avid crocheter. What advice would you give to your younger self? I would... I would probably say, no matter how bad you think life gets, don't resort to substances to stuff your feelings. Because it's just going to lead you to unhappiness. And be happy with who you are. Even if those around you don't love you for who you are. You know, you need to learn to love yourself. And be okay with that. What's, what's a food that you refuse, 
hate, dislike, oh, sorry, hate, dislike, refuse to eat. That's easy. Mushrooms. I think mushrooms are freaking gross. I had a bowl in here because I had Chinese tonight, and there were mushrooms in the dish that I bought, or that I got, and um, I was taking them out and throwing them into this bowl that had been my cottage cheese bowl from lunch, and um, my mom made me throw it out, otherwise I could show it to you as proof. Um, I hate mushrooms, though. So gross. I think they smell gross. They taste gross. Cooked, raw, no matter what. I hate mushrooms. Okay, what's next? Is that in? Yep. That was best to just do one of those. Just best to do one of those. Wipe your face on your sleeve. Now I'm rubbing it on my pants. My mom would be so pissed if I was like a seven-year-old kid. Um, what's your favorite song? Hmm. Oh, if I just had to pick one. I would probably have to say... Oh... Probably the 1812 Overture, because uh, when the Boston Pops do the 4th of July show, which I missed this year, um, they play the 1812 Overture, and then there's the part with the cannons, and let me see if I can, I'll, I'll find it, and I'll, no, I can't play music on here, dang it, YouTube sucks, F you YouTube. I think there's a list of songs that are allowed to be played. Because, like, it's it's a classical song. It's not like anyone has, you know, um, let me look. Is classical music allowed to be used on YouTube? What? That's ridiculous. Yes, the studios who did the performances and recordings own those songs. Just because the, the, mu the sheet music is classical doesn't mean the recording is free to use. That's a bunch of bull. Hmm. Alright. Sorry, it's, I want to play the 1812 Overture, so... I'm going to see if it's one of the... What? That's... Okay, let's search. Is the 1812 Overture? Is the 1812 Overture? This work is in the public domain in the United States because it was published or registered with the U.S. Copyright Office before January 1st, 1925. This work has been released into the public domain by its author, Skidmore College Orchestra. So that means I can use it, right? Okay, I'm gonna play it. If they take it out, oh well. Fifteen minutes long. Let's 
Let's see how it's a good volume. Now, just so you know, YouTube, this is the 1812 Overture, the by Pure Idiot Tchaikovsky. See, it's either this song or, um, What the hell is that song called? Boom. Boom. Bolero. Bolero by Maurice Ravel. I love that song. What's funny about the 1812 Overture is it's not made about an American war, but um, they play it for the 4th of July because of the cannon booms. They can always time it to go with um, fireworks. I'm oh, sorry. I'll let it get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um... Let me get back to the questions. Who do you admire? Ooh, that's a good one. It's a hard one. I would probably have to say... All of my sober friends and people who have tried to get sober. It's really hard to do, even admit that you have a problem. And it's... Okay. Um, it's hard to admit that you have a problem. So to even face that and try to go to AA or go to treatment... Um... It's, um, I admire anybody who can do that. Do you put your pants on left leg first or right leg first? Well, I'm right-handed, so I'm very right-centric when it comes to that, just like left-handed people are very left-centric. About having, like, left-handed scissors and left-handed utensils and shit like that. Um, but I put my right leg in first, then my left leg. Given the choice of any superpower, Sorry, given the choice of any superpower, what would you choose and why? Um, I would choose the power of flight. Um, it's because I have so many dreams where I'm flying. It's like probably like the most recurring type of dream I've had. Um, and so I'm just, I think that would be awesome to be able to fly. So, all right, those are, the, those are all of Claire's questions. Now let me get to... Um, the other questions that I found. Excuse me. What was your best mic drop moment? No. 
What childish thing do you still enjoy? Um, it happened today, actually. I was with my friend Adam that was in my 4th of July video. And um, we went to a playground with his kids. And I, swam, and I swang on the swings. I love the swings. That's, it was always my favorite as a kid. And I still love it as an adult. So that's, I guess that's a childish thing. <clears throat> What's the biggest doubt you have? Huh. I don't know what the biggest doubt I have. Oh, the biggest doubt I have is that I'll never be successful. That's more of a fear. That's not a doubt. I have faith in myself to be successful. I don't know what my biggest doubt is. Like, oh, here's my biggest doubt. I doubt that um, Trump isn't going to lose the election. So you get that? Like, that's me saying I have faith that he will win. I, I have no doubt that he will also, sorry, I have doubt that he will not lose. Um, I know I shouldn't talk about politics on here, but given the political climate in this country, um, and current state of this country, um, I truly believe he will be reelected. And I will leave it at that. Who has, and that leads us into our next um, question. Who has completely lost your respects? Um, all of my family who say that they love me but support Trump. And I'm including cousins in that. And aunts and uncles. And they say they love me, accept me, yet they vote for someone who only wishes to impede on other people's rights who are not a white, rich male. Or I guess in some cases, a white, rich female. But even then, she's a female, so not that important to them. But I digress. What movie do you wish life was more like? Hmm, that's a hard one. I think... Hmm. I should have marked how many of these I've done. Well, I'm on question five, but I skipped some. I don't want to do too many questions and get boring here, you know, because I, I realize I'm not being very entertaining right now. I know you guys always say you don't have to be entertaining. I still love seeing you. And now it's not me mocking you. That's me just being like... Um, anyways, I think... Um, all the movies I can think of, like, something bad happens. Oh! Uh, what was it called? Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children or something like that? That would be awesome if there was, like, I mean, not creatures trying to kill kids, you know, but, um... People with extraordinary powers and um, people protecting them. How many phones have you broken or lost? I have only ever broken two phones. Well, wait. Huh. And I didn't really break... This last one, because I got I have a new phone. I I have an iPhone XR. I know it's not an 11, because 11 was too expensive for a month. But it still has face recognition. So, like, look. Swipe up to unlock. Oh. Come on. Look, it unlocks. With my face. With my face. Um. How many phones have I broken? Well, I broke the screen. On that one that died. So I guess that counts. That counts. So two or three. There was there was 
There was a time that I had this phone. I had it for a very long time. Like it was a piece of crap. Like the faceplate was falling off of it. It was a Nokia phone. I had it for so long. And someone broke into my boyfriend's car and stole it. We stole a piece of shit phone. I was so mad. I called it as soon as we got to the car from the bar. And the guy answered. And I just, I cussed him out. <laughs> Who or what is your nemesis? I would have to say my nemesis is Bill Stevens. He lives in St. Louis. Um, his drag name is Celeste something, which makes me mad because my alter ego is Celeste. So I really want to hate him um, completely, but he has my, my, my alter ego's name as his drag name. So he has good taste. But... Um, he and I actually used to be close, and then we had a misunderstanding one time, um, at a rugby, a, in a way, rugby weekend, and, um, he's hated me ever since. Um, like, I was in charge of my car, because it was my freaking car, and I wanted to go to a a hot tub party after the drinking that we were doing. And um, he came up to me and said, I want to go back with them to shower. Like, these other people to shower. I was like, okay, cool, you can do that. I didn't say you can do that. I said, okay, cool. So I left. And then he texts me or calls me and is like, where did you go? We need to go over there. I was like, I told you I'm going to a pool party or a hot tub party. And so he had the audacity to be mad at me for not driving him to where he could go take a freaking shower. Um, like, it was my fault. Like, I thought he was telling me... Like, I told him what I was doing, which was going to the hot tub party, and he was telling me what he was doing, which was going to shower. That's what I thought. But no. What really he was thinking is that he was convincing me to go with him to go take a shower. And... Like, that's the thing that really pisses me off about it. He thought... Oh, let's get into the good part. He thought that he could... Um, all right, I have to pause it real quick. He thought he could... Get me to do what he wanted, I guess? You know, whenever that didn't work out, he got pissed at me. He goes, you left me at the bar. I was like, I told you. I was going to the hot tub party, and you told me you were going to go shower with them. You know, like, no-brainer. Like, that's what's going on. That's what I thought was going on. So, I mean, like, he would not shut the F up about me leaving him, like, for weeks. He's like, he left me at the bar. He left me at the bar. I was like... It's like, I, I, I just got to where I was sick of trying to defend myself. It's like, you can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. I know how it happened, so you can try to paint me in a bad light because you were trying to weasel your way into getting me and my car to where you wanted to go. But homie wasn't playing that game. And, um, yeah, we became mortal en enemies after that. Over something so juvenile and stupid. But also, I must say, he's a very immature person, and sees, I think he sees the world very differently from everybody else, because I don't see how, like, everything that he thinks, like, he thinks, like, the world owes him something, and, like, He's always been done wrong and hasn't had any part in his misery. Girl, Celeste, Bill, Stevens, you are the reason that everything happens to you. I had drag friends in St. Louis who wouldn't talk to him anymore or work with him or do anything for him. And he was talking about how, like, telling me about how the drag community, like, shunned him and... 
all this stuff. I was like, oh, poor you. And I heard from the queens who tried to help him that he was this ungrateful person. Like they would, they would give him something and he would be like, oh, well, this isn't what I wanted. And then it's like, well, guess what, bitch? It's free. So take it. And when he would work with them, he would just be a total bitch to everybody. And so everyone just got sick of it. And so he didn't really get shunned from the, the drag world. I think he just didn't like people not being nice to him and looking at him in a good light. Because that's his thing. He always has to be up here. If he's down here, then, oh. Anyway, enough about him. I've, I've wasted too much time talking about him. I'm going to put the music back on. Sorry, I'm listening to the music. song and last year the boston pops didn't have a show and so this makes two years in a row of not getting to see the boston pops do their concert um they're on the bay with with all the fireworks and everything so i'll also have to listen to that on my own all right where was i Oh, this is already 34 minutes. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. You guys got to hear the song. Um, I don't want to do it too long. Like, if you guys want to think of more questions to ask me, because I know those weren't very entertaining. They weren't, like, no, sorry, Claire's were entertaining. Um, but, like, I wasn't, oh, excuse me. I wasn't entertaining. And um, I know this was more of, like, a get-to-know-me kind of thing, but... Um, then I went and bitched about my arch nemesis for like half an hour. So, you know, can't win them all. Ooh. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed watching me eat ice cream and Sour Patch Kids. And 
sing a classical song. Do the bum 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 bum. You know, um, I don't know what you call that. What do you guys call that? Say in the comments. Anyways, all right, I'm gonna let you all go. Have a good night. Bye. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.